Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. I've been a little caught up the past few days, so didn't have time to make a fully edited, super awesome rocket video. But what I wanted to do this week is just make a screencast. And actually this screencast, I wanted to make it a little more dynamic where I'm actually clicking and typing and showing you guys something in real time. We're trying to show you guys something in real time. So the theme of this video is browser appreciation. And what I thought would be pretty cool to showcase is what we're all used to today, like in 2017 using Chrome versus what things were like back in the day. So something people don't realize all the time was that the internet existed before the internet browser existed. So you didn't always interact with the internet with this browser thing. Back in the day when the internet was first coming out, people used to use the command line. There was command line tools. There are still command line tools that we're going to show soon, but people used to actually browse the internet with just commands and read stuff on their terminal before Netscape and all the crazy browsers came into the picture. And obviously browsers changed the game for the internet, but they didn't come at the same time. The internet was first and then browsers came. So what I want to do in this video is that we just want to contrast how different it is browsing the internet with a thing like Chrome versus browsing the internet with a terminal. And we can showcase what it's like to do the old, old way and the new, new way. And that's what we're going to do in this video. All right. All right. First, let's just give a brief overview of what's on the screen. On the right, obviously, we have a terminal. On the left, we have Chrome. The only thing that might be a little new for some people is this thing on the bottom, which is Chrome Developer Tools. If you've done any work inside the browser or your front-end developer, you've definitely used these tools before, but these are just an awesome way to see what's going on with the browser. You can see every single network request here. You can play with JavaScript in this terminal. You can see all the HTML elements that are powering this page. You can see uh, different data that the browser is holding for you. But all in all, it's just a very helpful tool. It's almost an essential tool if you're doing any work in a browser. All right, so what happens when we just refresh this page on Google, Google's homepage, what happens? But first I wanna showcase is that there's a ton of requests being made. This is a temporal sequential list of every single network request that is made to power this page. The first one is google.com and then a bunch of others are created, so are made, sorry. So there's all photos, assets, different things, but we can check out what this request was. Well, it's a nice photo of my face. So you can see that request number six, one, two, three, four, five, six, the browser made a request to this resource to get a picture of my face, obviously to put it up here in the top right for my avatar image. And everything you see down here is very similar. Different assets, all the stuff that goes into, goes into making what you see right here. The most important request that I wanna look at is this first one, the one to google.com, which starts this whole waterfall of things. But the browser is making a request to this resource, and actually we can do the exact same thing in the terminal. So there's an old school command to do this. It's called curl. If you've never seen this before, I suggest checking it out, but it's just, whoops, that's a picture of my face. But let's just curl for this Google's homepage and see the data that we get back in the terminal. So, so this is the data we get back. Obviously, it's, it's nonsense for us to read, but it's just a huge, crazy string. So what the major thing I wanna show is that the data that's returned on the right by the terminal is actually the same exact data that the browser is getting back, and we're gonna prove it in just a second. But obviously, when we get this data back in the terminal, our terminal isn't designed to showcase this data. Anything that's returned is just raw data, right? When you request something, you get raw data back, but then you just interpret it differently. The browser interprets the string as a tree of elements that display versus the terminal doesn't know how to interpret it, so it just spits it out to you. But let's just see how the data itself is identical. So let's just go to the top. Where does this data start? It starts somewhere around up here, right? This is like the first data that's returned. And let's just take a look at the elements on this page. So 
if you just take a close look here at the elements on this page, uh, you can see this head element, meta content, search the world's information, including web pages, images, videos, and more. You can see that that exact information is right up here in the meta content. Search the world's information, including web pages, images, videos, and more. So what that just proves, it's like almost a no-brainer, but <coughs> getting this data with a command line tool is you get the same data back that you can get via a browser. The browser just interprets it differently and shows you something really cool. And back in the day, before this thing on the left even existed, everyone used to browse the internet with commands like this. Because now, since there's browsers, what data is returned by the servers is all HTML, tag, visual data, JavaScript data. It's really crazy. But when the internet first started, people used to host essays, documents, papers on the internet. So when you would curl for them, you would just curl and get someone else's essay from across the world back, and you can just read it on a terminal or save it on a file before all this HTML craziness came into the picture. So that's how it was used to done. And some people, some people still use curl to get data and they don't like using a web browser. So that's pretty crazy. Um, I'm going to show you guys one more cool thing. Okay, one other cool thing I want to show you guys is what these web pages look like if you're coming from a phone. So, let's see. Another cool uh, feature of this developer toolkit is that you can pretend you're visiting Google's website from an iPhone 6, and then you can see how the page is different, right? So these days, a lot of web pages are mobile optimized, and what that means is that when you hit them, from a phone, they're going to return different data that's mobile optimized versus if you hit that same web page from your desktop. So obviously if I hit google.com from my iPhone 6, different stuff is going to be returned. And we can also mimic that with curl on the right. So I'll show you guys how to do that, but let's see. So the major thing that's different is that there's a special piece of identification information that's sent in the request that tells it where you're coming from. So it's called the user agent. And every request made on the internet, most of them have this thing defined. So if you look closely here, the user agent, when I'm mimicking iPhone 6, is that it's Mozilla 5.0, iPhone, iPhone OS 9.1. But pretty much this little string here is dictating where I'm coming from. And if I was on the desktop, this would be something else. This would be like Mac OS or something. But since I'm mimicking an iPhone, it's an iPhone thing. And actually, I can do the same thing with curl here. So how to do that is you set the special A command, which is the agent. You set it as iPhone, and then you curl the same page, which is this page. Could have just typed that. So obviously, the data here, if you guys forget what the, here, let me just show the old one real quick. This is the old data. It looks like that. Just remember what that kind of looks like. And now this is the one with its iPhone. And you can tell that the data is already a little different, right? And let's just prove it. Uh, there's a lot of scripts going on here, but. So obviously, you can't use a command line to really surf the internet. But this is what people used to do, which is uh, pretty crazy. So obviously I can't, okay, so I can't find something too easily. So what I can do is, let's just look at this web page real quick. There's something special on the web page that I can test for. Um, God damn it. Okay, this thing on the bottom. So you guys see this thing on the bottom? It's better in the app. This little bar on the bottom is probably only showing up with the mobile site. It's better in the app. They wouldn't show you this string if it was just uh, a desktop version. So we're going to search for this string in our response here and make sure we find it. So we're going to grep for it's better in the app. Yeah, and we find something. See, grep found something here, which just proves that the data that we returned from that response has this data. So actually, just to prove that even further, I'm going to prove that this data doesn't actually exist when I changed the user agent. 
So let's just go back to our regular curl. And then I'm going to grep for the same thing here. And I'm expecting it not to return with anything. Right, it doesn't have anything because this tag doesn't even exist when we hit the web page from the desktop. But it does exist when we hit it from an iPhone. So hopefully that just pretty much I'm doing in the terminal what I'm doing on the left. Just a really terrible way. All right, guys, that's it for the live demo. Uh, hopefully after seeing those two things side by side, you just get an appreciation of you know everything the browser is doing. The browser is taking all this stuff, interpreting it for you, and showing you guys something super pretty. But back in the day, people used the terminal. So last, to just close off this video, I want to introduce a crazy person. It's one of the legendary computer scientist, but I was reading this guy's bio the other day and it's just insane. So first of all, Richard Stallman, uh, he created GNU. If you have no idea what GNU is, it's pretty much the most free, the whole project is based on free software and this guy started that movement. So definitely read up on this guy, but something that is really crazy about him that I read from this Wikipedia article is personal life. So yes, I'm reading about computer scientists' personal life, but check out this sentence right here. According to Stallman, with the exception of a few sites such as his own website or sites related to his work with GNU and the F FSF, he usually does not browse the web directly from his personal computer in order to prevent, prevent being connected with his browsing history. Instead, he uses wget or similar programs. wget is kind of like curl. He uses wget or similar programs that fetch content from web servers and then sends that content to his email. So pretty much, if you guys didn't get it, but since this guy doesn't trust web browsers, he doesn't use Chrome because he's afraid Chrome is tracking him. And he's right. Every time we use Chrome, Google is tracking the shit out of us. They're tracking every single click because they own Chrome. They know exactly what we're doing. But if you don't want Google tracking that stuff, you can be like Richard Stallman. He uses wget to browse the internet. So essentially, what this pretty much means is that this guy, Richard Stallman, he browses the internet like this. He uses curl, wget, he hits resources and he gets documents, then he sends those to his email to read. So that's if that if that kind of blew my mind. That's just crazy. Like this guy doesn't trust I can probably understand. He just doesn't trust the system enough. He doesn't want Google snooping in and all this stuff. And he uses terminal to still browse the internet in uh, the 21st century, which is pretty crazy. So that's just a little bit of random trivia for everyone. But if you don't know who this guy is, Richard Stallman, he is like legendary computer scientist. There's He's one of many. And I encourage everyone to, if you're curious, read about people like this. It's like they do crazy, crazy things. All right, guys, hope this video was a little bit fun, a little dynamic. Hope you guys have a deeper appreciation of everything the browser is doing to help us and why the internet is such an amazing experience. But, you know, back in the day, just 20 years ago, things were really different. All right, guys, I'll catch everyone next week. Have a great week. Do some awesome things and take care. All right.